We are with Dr. Robin Hanson. He is Associate Professor of Economics at George Mason University. Dr. Hanson, um, is medicine as important as uh, we think? In the United States, at least where I am, um, medical policy uh, is a huge element of, poli of national politics in the upcoming election and elsewhere. People talk all the time about uh, health policy, by which they mean medical policy, and it's not anywhere near as important as people seem to think. So let's go back to basics. Um, some people live a long time, some people don't. Some people are crippled, some people are healthy. When we go out in the world and we collect a lot of data on a lot of people, some of which are healthy and some of which are not, and we look at other features of them, like whether they're male or female and how old they are, what race they are, or whether they exercise or whether they drink alcohol or um, how rich or poor they are, uh, and we look at a variety of factors, including air pollution and how often they go to the doctor or, or whether they have health insurance or how much they spend on medicine. We try to do statistical analyses. That is, we try to see what predicts who's healthy. It turns out women are healthier than men. You know, young people die less than old people. Uh, exercise is good. Uh, smoking is bad. Alcohol seems to be somewhat good. Uh, sleep is good. <laughs> air pollution is bad. We see a bunch of sort of things you might think are obvious, relationships between health and other factors. But when we put medicine in that mix and we say, how much does medicine predict health? That is, people who have more health insurance or people who go to the doctor more often or people who live in regions that are more generous with health coverage. We see that having more medicine does not correlate with being healthier. We see a lot of things that are related to health and medicine isn't one of them. We see this when we look across nations. We see this when we look across regions of nations. We see this when we look across individual people, even in randomized experiments. Health is related to a lot of big important things, but it's not very related to medicine. Yet, when we talk about health policy, when we talk about what the government should do or anybody should do to make sure people are healthier, we focus almost entirely on medicine. We focus on whether people have the right health coverage or whether doctors are regulated right or whether we're building enough hospital beds. And we almost never talk about all the other factors that affect health. If you wanted to have policies that affected health, you could do it through exercise or air pollution or sleep or income or a whole bunch of other things we know affect health. And people are ent almost entirely uninterested in that. They, they, couldn't be, they couldn't care less about helping people live longer by eating, you know, eating differently or sleeping differently or getting less exercise. They, they might give it a little lip service, but they quickly get bored and on to other things. But as soon as you talk about medicine, their eyes are glued, they're passionate, they want to make sure people get enough medicine. But medicine doesn't have much to do with health. And why does this happen? Why, why is it that this happened? Well, this is a fundamental puzzle in human behavior, I'd have to say. And the first thing to do with puzzles is try to resist the temptation to explain them one at a time. I think the right disciplined way to deal with puzzles is to collect a bunch of them, lay them all out on the table, and find a small number of hypotheses that can explain a large number of puzzles at once. So that's the kind of thing I've tried to do with health policy puzzles. Instead of just trying to come up with one explanation to wait, explain one thing, I do try to explain a number of things. So, there's a number of other puzzles we have in health and health policy that we should lay on the table. Not only isn't medicine very effective, for example, people are very uninterested in information about the quality of medicine. You can tell them about the rates, success rates of your, doc, your surgeon and with previous patients or at your hospital, and they're just completely uninterested in that. That's pretty puzzling for something that's pretty important to them. People are very interested in regulating medicine compared to other areas. They, they, they like to make sure that uh, people behavior corresponds to their own beliefs about what's healthy. They like to make sure people wear seat belts and uh, have the right additives to their food and all sorts of, and have the right people giving them medical advice. Uh, compared to other areas, they're a lot less interested in. They're more interested in regulating the, stat, the behavior of low status people. Uh, status produces health enormously. There's a placebo effect whereby just appearing to get somebody some sort of medicine seems to make them better. There's a whole bunch of puzzles like this that you want to explain all at once as best you can and try to come up with a few assumptions and explain them all. So my best guess for that is twofold. One, at a more 
proximate cause is just that we're terrified of thinking about death. You've heard this before, it's not a surprise. This isn't a new idea. But you almost never think about what it implies. If you're terrified of thinking about death, then you stop thinking about it. How do you do that? You get the decision onto somebody else. <laughs> what do you want? You want somebody who seems competent to decide all your health things for you and fix them. What's that? That's called a doctor. <laughs> what you want is to not think about your health and have a doctor be responsible for that and say, hey doc, you fix me, you're thinking about death, I don't have to think about death, and it's over. So people have a lot invested in believing that doctors can make them better and that they will handle the problem, and if they don't eat right or don't exercise right, it's all right, the doctor will fix it later on. Not true, <laughs> but it's certainly a wishful thought that people would like to have. The other thing I think is that, more fundamentally, the, our distant ancestors evolved various kinds of habits and behaviors related to medicine in other areas, and I think they evolved a habit of using medicine to show that they care as opposed to just using medicine to make people better. So uh, if you think about it, our ancestors were highly social creatures. They were much more social than most other primates. They had much larger social groups. And they had large brains primarily in order to reason about the complex social dynamics of a large social group. And the most important thing in reasoning about a large social group is reasoning about shifting coalitions. And what are you reasoning about when you're reasoning about shifting coalitions? Who is loyal to who? Who will stay with who? Who is just pretending to be with who and who is actually going to stay? So signaling loyalty was extremely important to our ancestors. We have large brains exactly to figure that out. And how do you signal loyalty? Well, I can come shoot the breeze with you twice a day and you'll realize that I could have done that with somebody else so I must like you somehow better than somebody else, but that signals short-term loyalty. That shows that I like you better today. What signals long-term loyalty? Well, doing things that are expensive today and that'll have a long-term benefit. If I throw a feast every year, and if I'm thinking of betraying you, just before the feast is a good time, because then I don't have to pay for your feast. If I throw the feast for you, it suggests I expect to stay with you another year. Uh, if medicine, if you have a sick and injured associate who's gonna take a few months to take care of, that's a good time to dump them. If you're gonna dump them anyway, that's a good time. So if I still take care of you, that shows I'm not planning on dumping you anytime soon. It's a good signal of loyalty. So infrequent, Large expensive actions show long-term loyalty, and that's a very important to people. So things like taking care of a sick person, revenge killing, maybe building a large house, um, these are all things that signal loyalty, and we take it that way. People are very emotional about these sorts of things. They touch you. If somebody does these things for you, it makes you tears to your eye because it shows that they are deeply connected to you. And I think that's one of the things we use medicine for. When you use something as a signal, the important thing is that you do more of it than somebody who didn't care as much as you. It's not very important how helpful it is or how effective it is. The important thing is that it cost you. It shows that I care because it cost me, not because it helps you. And in order to, to show that I care, I have to be attentive to signals about quality that we share, but not about private signals of quality that I may get. If I'm buying you a chocolates for Valentine's to show how much I care about you, what I care about is what you think most people think is a good chocolate. If I privately think that one kind of chocolate is better than another, but I don't think you know that, I'm going to get you the standard kind. If you privately think that another kind of chocolate is better, but you think this is the kind everybody thinks is good, then you'll appreciate this as a gift because you will take it as a signal of my sacrifice in giving you the standard kind of quality. So gifts that are given to show that you care are things that people don't pay very much attention to private signals of quality. So again, showing that you care can explain a number of health policy puzzles. It shows our behavior toward health and in particular medicine may be more about showing that we care than about helping people's health. So that could explain why we're so obsessed with medicine, and particularly in a communal context where we're trying to show how much loyalty we have and caring we have toward other people in our society, where even though doesn't make people healthier. Thank you very much, Professor Hanson, for sharing these thoughts You're with us. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you.